previously on X-Men. X-Men 97 is not a reboot of the original series, but literally a next day continuation. Come on, let's go. Everything Charles fought for now belongs to me. Like in the 90s show, we're keeping the themes of those stories that were so powerful. No more mutants! But adapting it for a brand new audience what must we do to be good enough? The animation is absolutely beautiful. It's true to the original. Heads up! It's so wonderful to revisit the series. So much of the cast is back. We're even in the same studio. I am Storm, mistress of the elements. 30 years ago, we had no idea how much our show was affecting the whole world. This show is the perfect combination of characters and style. And, of course, the theme song. Buckle up, team. Surrender, mutant. The show is representing the past while being unique. It's everything you want from a new X-Men series. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Doesn't that theme music just bring back all the member berries? This is a brand new Marvel X-Men 97 trailer, so of course we'll break it all down. Also, big WTF, they literally fired the showrunner right before they were going to do press, like right before the actual premiere. So I'll explain what's going on with that, too. It has nothing to do with the actual series itself. It sounds like it was something that happened in real life. But it is super weird for that to happen, like right before the actual show premieres. But if you're brand new to the channel, I will be doing videos for all the episodes. All this X-Men hype is meant to set people up for Deadpool and Wolverine, where a bunch of live-action X-Men are coming back. Like, there are even a couple of sly references to live-action X-Men stuff during this, during the original X-Men movies. Because most of those actors, not everyone, but a lot of them, are coming back during Deadpool and Wolverine, even though it's going to be as variants of their characters. I am sure there's going to be a lot of questions about that when they all show up. Like, wait a minute, are these the original versions from those movies? Or are these the different versions just with the same actors? The whole deal with the showrunner from X-Men 97 getting fired just yesterday as me posting this video is that Disney announced that they had quote-unquote parted ways in like a not nice way. Like the way they put it was not very nice. With Bo DeMeo, who had been the head writer on X-Men 97 Season 1, he'd already written Season 2. They were talking about doing Season 3. It sounds like they will still do Season 3. They'd fired him last week, and as of last week, like right after it happened, he wiped all of his social, so like there's no social media presence from this person that just got fired, meaning that it was probably related to something that he had done in real life, or something that he had not done, or some argument that he had with them. Like, what did he do to make them so mad that they fired him right before the actual premiere of season one? Either way, the actors have been recording X-Men 97 Season 2 already, and it sounds like they're still making Season 3. They'll just bring in other writers to finish that process. That's about the extent of the drama. I try not to get too deep into that, especially when we don't know a lot about the actual facts, so that's why I'm not speaking too much about it. The actual material from the episodes actually looks pretty solid, though. Like, it does look like it's going to be a really solid show. Most of this trailer is just meant to hype you up on the nostalgia of it all, with the original voice actors showing them recording lines for the new episodes. They brought back as many of the original voice actors that were still alive. There are a couple new people voicing a few of the characters, but only in cases where the original voice actors had passed away. So if you wonder why it sounds the same as the original series, it's because it's the same voice actors, they're just a little bit older now. They start out with a montage going backwards in time, like it's a bit of a Loki Season 2 kind of reference, or Loki Season 1 with them going through the timeline, just going back to the events of the original series in 1997, because that's the year when the original series was cancelled. They would have done Season 6 in 1998, had it not been cancelled. They also use this reverse montage to show you how technology and culture has evolved. 2023 is just a random microchip. 2022 is a generic night shot of Japan for some reason. Some of these are just generic shots of different cities. 2021 is of the World Cup from that year. 2020 is just a random cityscape. I'm not sure which city this is. It might be New York City. Everybody remembers the big event, quote unquote, that happened in 2020 around the entire world. It was not a good event. 2020 was the beginning of dark times for a like couple years. 
2019 is a shot of someone browsing Disney Plus streamer, haha, because it's the year Disney Plus launched. It's meant to represent the rise of streaming television as opposed to traditional broadcast television, which the original X-Men show was. 2018 seems like a shot of Italy, maybe France, not sure about the city. I think this is France. 2017 is a shot of the solar eclipse from that year. 2016 is just a generic shot of someone texting to show the evolution of modern smartphones since the time of the original series. You could look at the James here as a James Hallett Wolverine reference though. 2016 was the year the first Deadpool movie came out. 2015 is just a generic shot of a city park, not sure which city this is. We have no idea how that happened, but I promise you, I'm looking into it. 2014 fireworks seem like another New Year's generic shot. 2013 weirdly seems like the scene from a movie set set in the Wild West of the 1800s. I'm not sure which movie this is supposed to be or why they use this for the 2013 representation. 2012 is a shot of cars crossing the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. The car years are from that era. 2011 is another smartphone scene of someone checking their GPS map for directions, but it's a more primitive version of that. Nope, that didn't help things. 2010 seems weirdly like a shot of Dr. Strangelove in the war room with them about to launch nuclear weapons, but it's in color. Not sure why they use this shot for that year either. 2009 is a shot of a military drone to show the evolution of military technology since the late 90s. That's also the year Wolverine Origins came out. Yeah, that was not really what we had in mind. 2008 is a shot of the San Francisco Bay in Alcatraz. 2007 is a shot of the Statue of Liberty in New York City, also prominently featured during the first live-action X-Men movie. Most of those actors are coming back in Deadpool and Wolverine. And notice around this year, you start to see scan lines appearing on the TV screen as if someone is watching the montage on a CRT TV, and the TV is just shifted from flat screen to CRT because flat screens didn't really become the majority until around this period. Before this, it was more common for people to have CRTs in their homes. And as the years continue to roll back, the camera keeps pulling out of the TV frame, revealing more of the CRT in the aspect ratio changing from widescreen to 4x3. 2006 just seems like generic surveillance footage. 2005 also seems like surveillance footage of the same cafe in France that we just saw in a later year. Not sure why they're doubling up footage. 2004 is a flip phone to show the backwards evolution of cell phone technology. They just started development of the iPhone in 2004. It wasn't released till a couple years later. So smartphones like the iPhone or Android phones didn't really become a big thing till like the late 2000s. Around this period, flip phones and like Blackberries were way more popular. I remember having a Blackberry around this time. 2003 is a random shot of an American house with a Mazda Miata from that era. 2002 is another space shuttle launch. 2001 is the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. The year 2000 is a fax machine. Remember when everybody used fax machines? As the camera continues to pull out on the frame, you can also see the Colossus action figure from the right of the TV. Like they've used this same CRT in previous trailers at the beginning of trailers. This Colossus action figure was part of the wave of Marvel toys that were being sold at that time. Like you could have gone into a store and actually bought this particular toy. It's even still got the price sticker on it. If you still got some of these toys, they might be worth some money now. 1999 is two kids playing basketball. 1998 is one of the earlier huge models of cordless phones. It isn't a cell phone. It's a phone at someone's house, like a landline, because it was way more common during the late 90s for people to be using landlines than cell phones because it was still pretty rare and they were still very expensive. But there were actual cell phones during this period. Like they had cell phones back in the 80s, even in the 70s, and they were ginormous like this. Then during 1997, it shows the final scene of the original X-Men series because that's the year that it aired. As it pulls the TV back more, you also see Wolverine's picture from the original series of Jean Grey and Cyclops from the scene that has been memed to death. I mentioned it in several of my videos. As Professor X starts reciting his dialogue from that particular scene when he's going off to the Shi'ar Empire with Lalandra, they transition to the brand new intro scene with some of the new animation and the Marvel Animation logo that's replacing the Marvel Studios logo just because this is like a new sub-brand that they created to release all their animated stuff. What they'll probably do now is that all their animated stuff like What If Season 3 when that's released, the Marvel Zombies animated series when that's released, will all be under Marvel Animation, so those logos will play at the beginning of the shows instead of the Marvel Studios logos like they used to do. 
and they use a version of the classic animated theme song. There was a remix of that in the earlier trailers, so we'll see which version they use when the show comes back. I'm hoping that it's closer to the original version, but they might have tuned it up just like a little bit. Then they have Brad Winterbaum talking about how this is connected to the original X-Men the animated series. Basically, like, takes place the next day. It's meant to be season six, essentially. They just made all the animation way shinier, way newer. But as he says, it's not meant to be a sequel series. It's just meant to be like the next day in that universe. You also probably remember him from all the promos that they released for the Echo show because he was talking about how they had just canonized all the Marvel Netflix stuff to the MCU. That was probably his big contribution during all those trailers. Like, oh, by the way, all this stuff, Daredevil, all the Netflix shows, it's all canon now. They use a lot of the classic animation during this promo. I know people asking about this series too. Like, does this mean the X-Men, the animated series is now canon to the MCU? The way that they're treating this is that it's set in an alternate universe so they can just do whatever they want to with these characters. Then when we get to Deadpool and Wolverine, that'll be like the next step of X-Men in the MCU because a lot of them will be coming from the original official X-Men universe. Like Deadpool's universe is the original X-Men universe. But some of the movie takes place in the MCU, so it's sort of like this wonky place in all the timelines and the continuity. It's still a bit of a multiverse movie. And they've been slowly rolling in new mutant characters inside the MCU like Namor and Miss Marvel. And it sounds like the new X-Men solo movie will be traditionally in the MCU like you would expect them to do. But a lot of those characters will be recast versions. So it sounds like they're letting Deadpool and Wolverine sort of do its own thing with the multiverse and bringing the old characters back, kind of like a Spider-Man No Way Home situation. But by the end of that movie, you'll have a much better idea for what the brand new reboot X-Men movie is going to look like inside the MCU with the new actors. So Deadpool and Wolverine is kind of meant to work out all the kinks with mutants in the MCU. And while that's going on, we have multiple seasons of X-Men 97 or X-Men the Animated Series just continued, set off in its own universe so it doesn't have to worry about any of that stuff. There have been some Easter eggs for X-Men the Animated Series and the live action stuff. Like they use the theme song a couple times in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness with Professor X's floaty chair from X-Men the Animated Series. When they introduced him on screen, they played the theme song. And when they revealed that Miss Marvel was a mutant at the end of her series, they used X-Men the Animated Series theme song again. But those were just meant to be Easter eggs. It wasn't meant to tell you that X-Men the Animated Series was taking place in the MCU or anything like that. Like they were just riffing on X-Men stuff. There are a couple brand new scenes, like you see the death certificate of Charles Francis Xavier, Professor X. I think the idea is that he's meant to come back at some point after he's healed in the Shi'ar Empire. But on Earth, they make it seem like he's died so that they can continue using all of his assets, the X-Mansion. And it doesn't go into probate or anything like that. It's like some weird legal situation. In the way that Magneto says when he shows up, like everything that Professor X, everything that Charles Xavier worked for belongs to me now. It seems like in Professor X's will, so to speak, he left everything to Magneto so that Magneto can just continue using the team the way that he did. I think Professor X hoped that this would be the redemption of Magneto. So even though he's going to be way more hardcore than Professor X was, he's still going to be trying to do good things redeeming himself. A lot of people have noticed that this scene of them in all their basketball gear is similar to what they look like in the original X-Men comics when they were playing basketball. Love that their consulting producer here is wearing this hat that says previously on X-Men. If they do not open the first episode with this, it will be a huge missed opportunity. Previously on X-Men. Previously on X-Men over 25 years ago. There's a couple brand new scenes that they work in here with them inside the X-Mansion and people rallying outside yelling at them. It sounds like mutant liberation is going to continue to be a big theme just because that was always a big runner during all the original X-Men episodes. Also, the Friends of Humanity. They were the evil anti-mutant organization that was trying to get rid of them. Really cool brand new scene of Jean Grey using her powers. She's not in Phoenix form, but she is super powerful. A lot of people wondering about this too. Technically, she would be like the most powerful person on Earth next to Scarlet Witch. Storm is another Omega level mutant, but she's not quite as powerful as Jean Grey because of the Phoenix Force. The original actor who played Nightcrawler coming back, a lot of people have asked about this too, like where's Nightcrawler in all these trailers? Are they not gonna do Nightcrawler? It sounds like they heard everybody, so they're like, we'll put him in this promo to let everybody know that he's actually gonna show up during the series. We get a longer scene of them inside the danger room fighting the Sentinels. There's another brand new scene of Wolverine. Then we get a montage of a bunch of the original voice actors together. When the actress who played Rogue is talking about 30 years ago, we had no idea this was going to become so popular. You have to remember that during the 90s, X-Men were supreme. Like they were the most popular 
big Marvel comic book characters at the time, which is when, when Marvel went bankrupt and they started selling off their characters in order to pay off that bankruptcy. Fox bought the X-Men rights and they made the X-Men movies first in the year 2000 because at the time they believed they were the most financially viable people to do from Marvel Comics just because they had been so popular recently during the 90s. But the picture of all the toys here in real life is actually of the brand new toys that you could go out to the store and buy right now. Like they're actually selling these so you could actually go buy these literally right now. All these real life shots of the cosplay is from San Diego Comic Cons in the past couple of years. These are a bunch of brand new Funko toys based on X-Men 97 characters. New Lego toys of the X-Jet. Like I literally bought this toy from one of my nephews for Christmas. Then they mix in a live action X-Men movie scene of the door to Cerebro closing. Like I said, they talk about the rise of the popularity of the X-Men during the late 90s because this movie came right after that in the year 2000. There's a couple brand new scenes also of Sentinels flying off from this island here. Sentinels are supposed to figure in heavily to the first couple of episodes in some way. Not sure what's going on in this scene with all the missiles flying at Wolverine and Nightcrawler, but I'm guessing that Nightcrawler might wind up teleporting Wolverine away. Like, all right, you know, we're not going to beat all these missiles by ourselves. Then they play the theme song with more footage from the first couple of episodes. I'm not sure who Beast is looking at here inside the case. You can let me know in the comments which character you think that this is. But if there's any Easter eggs or references during this new footage that you spotted in the trailer that I didn't talk about in the video, just write it below in the comments. Like I said, new episodes start next week. Of course, I'll be doing videos for everything. I believe it's going to be two episodes for the premiere, and it'll be weekly episodes after that. The other big reminder is that Invincible Season 2 episodes are literally starting tomorrow as of me posting this video, so my next episode video for that will also post after they release it. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. We have Invincible episodes and X-Men episodes at the same time. It is going to be really good for the next couple months. Everybody click here to learn about Iron Fist coming back in Shang-Chi 2, and click here for all my other X-Men videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.